come on then. All right, all right. listen, I'll go to the next one. It, it, it's also North American thing. Liquid okay. needs to change 60% of their team <laughs> to become better. <laughs> Dude, haven't they played like, like a group okay. stage? Planes of one. No, they haven't, even, they haven't even played one full land. I like, can It's not that. The RMR Did is a land. Did you see okay. all the qualifiers? It wasn't good. I'll give you that. It wasn't Did you good. see all the games they right. played? Did you see like the way they played the RMR? Like, are you are you hundred yes, percent sure yes. that? Are you are you genuinely suggesting that they're only going to keep Naf and Twist? Is that really Duncan, your suggestion? Yes, Duncan. <laughs> no, <laughs> Duncan, can, can can there is no there is no universe where they're kicking Cadian already, bro. You only just no, joined yeah, the team. Not, there's no <laughs> world. There's listen, no way. They're not doing that. Did you watch the North? This tells me that you didn't watch the North American. Look, March. you saw the score, did. you <laughs> tweets, and you fucking didn't watch a single game. No, listen, <laughs> it, listen, Kassad, I acknowledge you was really bad but put it this way how is that fucking mind body esports video gonna look if Cadian's booted after like <laughs> two months like after like a bunch of qualifiers like well, they, can't, right? they can't kick it's him on the team bro the esports who's shooting people and making calls in game no, but they, they can't come online because they do a tweet like announcement we're changing everyone except that and twist like that's just not gonna happen listen, it's just listen like, i messaged <laughs> steve i messaged steve after their game immediately Steve, like uh, the, the GM or like, the guy or whatever. I told him, buy Kixon and you won't regret it. He never replied. He never <laughs> okay. replied. He didn't reply. Okay. He never replied. But you, the you thing just is, planted like, the seed. No, no, it's just I told him. Like, buy you know, Hampus. The is, like, I have nothing against KDN or other players, like personally. I just don't think that group, that group of players is good enough together, right? And also the Kadian is taking off the, the spot of the Oper and the IGL at the same time. That shouldn't be a thing. You should have an Oper and you should have an IGL, right? There's plenty of Opers for you if you're liquid. 600K, is that what they paid for Skulls? Some of them, yeah. Yeah, some yeah they insane, paid 600K. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think there is a 600K Oper that, that can play in liquid? In EU, in CIS right now. Should be tons, I, I assume. Uh, surely, right? And if they want to you know, spend some more money, they can bid for Monesty or whatever, right? But the, the, the thing is, like, right now it's not good enough. Yekidar needs to be replaced with someone like, they said it yourself, Heavy God maybe, whatever, right? And then Skulls, obviously, I, I, don't, I don't know how good player he is or how bad player he is. I know Maui has his opinions, but... Just being, being, imagine like being put in that spot in that team. That team has a lot of personalities. Oh, for sure. Like personalities, very, very big, hard personalities. Uh, twists came from phase. They were winning everything. They won Grand Slam. They were a championship team. Cadian that came from Heroic. That was a championship team. They had their own processes, their own ways how to do things. Yekin, that is obviously a guy with big personality. We saw that in the past. And you and obviously I know Nath, and he also has a quiet, but he has a personality too. He wants things done in a certain way. He wants like you know to play a proper Counter Strike, and then you have Skulls obviously put in that position to fucking without any any kind of decision making, right? Liquid missed an opportunity when Nerds was available. Nerds was sold to Heroic for 500k straight up buyout, right? And he went there with so Liquid could have bought that duo, and they would have a great player in Nerds. And even if they kept Cadian, he would know how to use Nurse. Nurse is a solid player, one of the top 10 players right now, not even top 5. And he can do so much in terms of like helping with the calls, helping with the ideas and all these things. And he is much better player right now than Yekindar ever was. So that was the opportunity that was missed by Liquid. Right, Kixan is a young, up and coming, obviously up and coming IGL, very wanted by some other teams. He had a set pri uh, buyout. Liquid didn't take it. I don't know if they even inquired about it. They missed so many opportunities. Right now, they went for these names like Kadian and you know and Twists and, and all these things, and it obviously hasn't panned out the way they need them to be. You said like they need more time, but like reality, speaking in, in, in reality right now, do you see this lineup? being better in like three months from now, better to the point where they are in contention to win the event or being deep in the playoffs because Liquid is a not, not a group stage team, not a group stage or especially if you spend 600k for a player. You know who costed, who was, uh, who was like, whose price was 600k? Monesi, right? Yes, it was two years ago. So the, the inflation and the market value and all this shit come into play. But the thing is like, 
right now, 600k for that player. I don't know who signed off on that one. Somebody had to grip the green light and say, yeah, send them the check, right? Which was obviously a bad idea. Not because he's a bad player, but he doesn't work. It. So for 600k, they could have got much better player and much better team structure. So 60% is what I would change to make look better. All I'm going to say is, okay. I'm, I'm just saying this as a harmless joke that obviously has no connection to reality or any the likeness of anyone I might imply I am referring to. But it does seem to me at this point in time that like buying Brazilian players using a buyout reminds me of the international art market where it just looks like money launder at this point in time. It looks like you go, like how much money would you like to buy him for, sir? And he goes, well, if I was to get 200k back, I'd probably like to buy him for 700k. Well, 700 it is then, sir. Here's my 500k, then here's your two. Like, this is like, because the problem is the whole numbers in that one region just don't make any sense. I'm with you, Kassad. This is the part that I don't get is when you look at the liquid lineup, obviously, he's like the placeholder. He's like the last name, isn't he? Like, and the joke is, Skulls at the moment isn't Skulls the player because barely anyone knows him from pain. He's just not K Serato because they didn't get K Serato. So the idea that piece costs you 600k is kind of wild, I have to say. Like, I don't know what, what universe that makes sense. Surely you'd min max that spot okay. if you're going to replace. Him anyway, wouldn't you? So I they just know. got a little. They just got a little bit better player than Rainmaker. Yeah, right? yeah. In terms of like uh, skill, that's if all. even that. If he, even he, I think, I, and Rainmaker is farming right now in tier two. So yeah, I don't know if he's if even better than Rainmaker. His, take a look really at his know. numbers right now. He's like playing sick. Right, but that's a different topic. But overall, like I'm saying, like they need to, like make a plan right now. They failed. Obviously, they're gonna play pro league. I don't know. That's maybe Dallas because they qualified, and. Make a plan called IEM, uh, not IEM, PGL Shanghai 2024. Get what you need. Get what you need in the player break. Do your proper boot camp. Do your proper preparations. Build a structure. It can be done in three, four months, definitely. And just return liquid to the like winning ways. Because right now, spending 600k, I don't know how much they spent for Kenya. Was it free or they had to buy them out? I'm not sure. Like, nobody nobody ever mentioned that, right? Not sure on that one. No, no, nobody ever right. mentioned that. Like we, we don't know that. So maybe they spend more money on Kadia. Let, right? let me just, yeah, yeah. Let me what just say, twist? was he bought out or or uh, contract expired? Like, there's questions, right? For all this money that he's been spent, what did they get in return? Like, yeah, I understand it just started, whatever. But like the reality of the things, like things have been looking bad in the qualifiers, look bad on land where they shouldn't be looking bad because all these players are very capable and they were very successful on LAN events. Right now, it's a problematic. For me, like I said, I would just react immediately. Yeah, let's... So, okay, so obviously I've been out for the Skulls move and a lot of that was motivated by the fact that he had a 600k buyout, which I always felt was completely unjustified. And I want to just say that I, I actually... I'll take your your point and I'll just take it down one notch, a single notch, because I don't think you actually need to replace 60% of the lineup. To me, it's just 50% of the lineup. The 50% being Zeus, Yakindar, and, and Skulls. Zeus, to me, has actually proven to be detrimental to this team's success. And in terms of what he did with Fluxo, it was straight up abysmal. If you, anybody watched Fluxo play, they came in last place at the previous major. It was a miracle that they were able to make it. And the only reason they were able to make it to the major was because they had... They they were able to play Paqueta for the spot to get the fifth spot out of the America's RMR. And they barely beat them. Like, it wasn't a convincing win at all. Like, when we were working that America's RMR and watching Fluxo in the lead-up to it also, back for the Paris Major, that was probably one of the worst call teams I have ever watched in my life. Like, that was literally watching Lukowski trying to 1v9 every single round because that guy would just run out of anywhere, any got any spot, and just try to get a multi-kill entry as, like, Woody is doing God knows what on the other side of the map with an op. Phelps is just doing his little weird ass lurk and then the other players are just doing anything that they felt like also like there was no structure to that team whatsoever that we could follow when watching those games and then also on this team Zeus obviously was a big reason that they brought skulls into this lineup and he got them to go for the 600k buyout I mean like I brought up before the fact that this is like to me it reads as a nepotism move that skull that skulls was brought on because he was of his of his uh Zeus knowing him at all well now 
like Thorin, you're saying it's like potentially like like a money laundering thing. Like, why is this guy getting so much money? Why did Payne get paid so much? Does Skull does Zeus have some involvement in Payne or in Skulls' money? Like, I need to know these things because to me, it still doesn't make any sense that he's on this roster. And the reason it can just be 50%, you get rid of Skulls, you can there's actually many anchors in North America that would satisfy the three-fifths or more people or like just majority roster Americas that would have done just fine. If you even look at uh, on M80, that rec guy, very similar numbers at this major or at this at this event. He doesn't have the language barrier because because so, so many people in my mentions are coming to me and saying, oh, give Skulls more time. He the like the language barrier. It's going to get better. It's like, why did we have to even deal with that in the first place? Why did we have to even why did what's the point of getting a guy where there's a known language barrier for this ceiling that isn't even that high? Like like if Skulls were putting up 1.3 ratings against Brazilian opposition and against top 30 in his limited numbers, he was like a 1.2 rating player. I say, yeah, give him time. Let's see what the what his ceiling is once he does learn English. But we know that his ceiling, even when he's speaking in his native language, is like a 1.03 versus top 30 opposition. Like this was never a number where I was like so super convinced that, it, oh my God, if he's able to learn English to a really high degree, this is going to be the difference maker. No, it's not. Like there's other there's other American anchors that are just as good as Skulls right now, probably on pretty cheap buyouts too. And so if you get rid of Yakindar, bring in an America, you could bring in an America's anchor or an America's, probably an America's anchor would be a little bit easier, like a rec type player. And then you also just look for a newer European edition, like a Heavy God, for example, then you're... Then I think you're cooking. I don't think KDN should need, be leaving just yet. Maui, mm -hmm. do you need an anchor? Like, Vaf is a pretty solid anchor himself. If you want someone that's going to go roll for roll with Skulls, he took some small side anchor spots too. Right? Like, but some. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you don't need a proper, and you can get so okay, many right. players. And obviously, like, okay, if, if you went for a cheaper, like, option that you need to, like, go economy, right? And you need to, like, you know, think about the money and all these things, but they spent 600K. Allegedly, yeah, I keep saying it too. That's why I'm. That's why but I'm just. That like, is the gassed. problem, right? If, or, you go to Europe and you just have an an enormous <laughs> amount of players that cost half that, and they're twice as better. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you an example. Brolan was three hundred k. Brolan. Yeah, it's a little bit of a risk, but still experienced player, defensive player, played multiple lands, he speaks English, he's now in mouse sports. Do you think he would do a better job than Skulls in Liquid? Obviously, yes. Like, he's way better. He's and proven to be better, he's better today. It wouldn't even be 300, it would be half that, or whatever the fuck you yeah. can negotiate down to. Instead, you go and pay this much money to get this, like, this is what I have a problem with when it comes to Liquid. And some other organizations too, because they completely fucked the market up. So right now we are where we are, but yeah, 60% uh, of the team. But maybe I can agree with Mario on 50%. 60% is too much because here's the problem. What The problem that we're doing here is this, right? Logically, if this was so obvious that this lineup shit, then when it was even speculated on for months that this would be the lineup, we all heard the rumors. I mean, the only difference was it might have been Case Rattle instead of Skulls. That's real, by the way. That was something they were trying to do. I even threw the in, that piece of info out there, which now, by the way, has aged like a fucking banger. That one I told you where maybe Elise was considered, but someone vetoed him in the team. Quite an interesting one now, isn't it? Because you imagine slotting a player like that in. But what I will say is this. The reason why I think 60% is too much, which, look, it's good as a hot take, but I just don't agree. I don't think it is what they should do. Is that's too many players. Like the real problem this team has. The joke is you guys are tunneling on skulls, but the reason you're getting the skulls is you're just jumping over a giant chasm called Cadian and Yakinda. Am I missing something? Cadian and Yakinda never played like this in other teams, boys. Like Yakinda used to actually be like a HL TV top 20 player, like for reals. Like not just because his team was good, he was like straight up like eye test a top 20 player. And then Cadian obviously famously was not only like a really good IGL, he could sort of frag while doing it. Like, neither of them are doing anything vaguely like the shit that got them the spot on these teams. So, I'm with you. Skulls has played like shit, and I agree on the buyout. Like, actually, now that ha does look terrible in hindsight. But also, two of the most important pieces in this team are just absolute ass right now. So, quite frankly, at the moment, like, you're actually treating Cadian like he is supposed to be fucking glaive. Like, he's supposed to be super mind. It's not just even about his game anymore. So, I, like, my problem is this. If I, knowing teams, I think 
the idea you can change three is not even plausible. Like, there's no universe where, like, if you did spend 600k, well, then you're not going to turn around. I'm sorry, all all orgs do operate on sunken cost fallacy. They're not going to turn around and kick the 600k player. Like, you're going to give him more chances because you spent 600k. That's how you're going to think in your mind. Then, on the other players, like, if I had to guess, this is why I don't think personally they'll change almost anyone if I had to guess because maybe they do one player change. Because again, with the KD one, you've basically built, he's like going to be the whole face of the team now. You, you've got him in in a way where it's like, you haven't made it like, hey, we're going to test this lineup out. You've basically made it like, welcome, KD. And this is like the new era of Team Liquid. And then finally, you have. Um, fucking, what's his name? Your Kindar has basically also been one of your faces of the team the last two years, so I actually think they're in a really tough spot. Like, here's the joke, unlike the Astralis one, where there are people you could cut or bench, but you might not like it in the game. I, don't, I think they're actually sort of checkmated. I don't know who you can bench. Who, who could you bench without looking stupid, either financially, or you just won't get as big a name? So I, I imagine they'll do maybe one play. I don't know, actually. This is actually a really bad spot they're in, because the problem I had was this, Maui. I at least assumed they would get through this RMR, so it's like, right, as long as you get the main it's, it's all cool. We can turn this around. There's time. The problem is because they haven't qualified for anything at all. That's the thing that I think is more pressing than even how bad they are. It's like, like how many tournaments will you even get at this point in time? You're going to have to go into the next cycle for all the online. Like the joke is you could actually, no joke, but just only have blasters, your lands for this year and like pro league. That's it. Like what else yeah. are you going to have? So that's the thing that might push them, but there's no way that you, I, I cause it's the problem. Cause sad, like our, when you say they should change 60%, so they should you also should bring in three different players at once, not just do like one player change and then see what happens. You bring in remember, we already started from zero with this. Like, we're just gonna bring three totally new players in. The thing is that it's a tough call, right? It's a very difficult decision and it's a very like risky decision. Sure, to make. yeah. Like more than risky, simply because it's not just the three guys they just brought in, right? Yekinder has how many months on his contract? And Nath just re-signed his contract in what, November or October, right? Somewhere, so he probably yeah. has two more years. So they can have, they cannot have anybody to replace him without like getting a massive loss, right? Simply, obviously, we don't know how much they paid for Cadian and Twist or if, if they paid anything for them. So, but if they didn't, then what's stopping you from removing those two players and get another two players? Nothing, right? Especially when it comes to Cadian and then bringing a new IGL. Because, like I said, maybe you need to take one or two steps back to get you know yourself forward in the future right because what's the alternative like let's look at it this way we cannot sell the players right now because we just bought them and we spent 600k and 300k whatever the fuck was the price and then we obviously it's not looking good it's very problematic inside the team outside the team whatever the fuck so what is the alternative we hope that it's going to get better and the other alternative doesn't get better so you waste another, what, six months, another major, another potential multi-million dollar income because North American region is much easier to qualify right now than any other region, including the Asian one. So what is the, the, the alternative there? We don't qualify again with this lineup. We fail now. Maybe complexity gets better. Maybe energy gets better. Maybe nouns get better. Maybe Brazilian teams... Maybe Furia gets a proper team and another Brazilian team shows up and they give it there. Where is your spot in the RMR? That you need to go through the open qualifiers again. And then you lose that ability to play for the next major. You lose a couple of million dollars there. And then you make a move in the winter break. Like, I mean, do you do that? What is the, what is the, the, the smartest solution for Liquid at this point? For me, maybe I maybe not 60%, maybe 40, maybe two players. Look, it's a good hot take. I just think it's a fucking yeah, blistering yeah, may, hot take. May, may, maybe you give Skulls another another chance, another shot. Because maybe you give even Katie another shot. But does Yekinder get another shot in this team? He got a shot as a player. He got a shot as an IGL. He got a shot as another player. By the way, I will say one thing I do want to just put out there, because I think in talk shows, I hope people keep bringing this lens up, is I tell you what, actually, this last six months has shown me. When I look at the, some of the different lineups that have been made, I would, as a pro player, be very nervous about any projects that are being built from the scratch, like from the ground up, and they would never play. At this point in time, I would, for real, only be joining teams where it's like they've got a core of three, and I know they were good, because like this is scary how many of these lineups on paper look like they could be fire, and then they're just never even vaguely good in the so it's actually it's really disturbing yeah it, it is it is very hard it, it's also the financial aspect of the thing right well, of course when yeah. well just i imagine they have pretty high salaries in liquid Never except maybe skulls right mm -hmm. yes like maybe he has like a solid salary but not high but 
Cadian wouldn't go for anything less than no, 15, no. 20k, sure. right? And then Twist wouldn't go and downgrade from phase into Liquid without getting 20, 25, 30k. And then, you know, you have other players, Nef resigned, he wouldn't resign for to salary cut, cut as well, right? So there's a lot of money there. A lot of money that's mm. being spent. I am sure in Liquid, yeah, they have their sponsors, they have everything. But the income that you get from the stickers is a multi-million dollar thing that can cover up for all of your salaries for the few, for the next year. Right? That is a financial aspect of the whole thing. So it's a very tough decision for Liquid right now in terms of what they need to do. Do they risk another major cycle and give this team like a proper thing? And like if they, if they fail, then they change? Or they immediately react and change something to qualify for Shanghai and maybe get some money back? Right, so it's just a very difficult call. Also, I want to know what's the situation in Liquid. I mean, we'll never know this, but it would be nice to know. Does Zeus have a full control of the thing? It was implied what's... to me he did. So no, no, I'd but, be very but, interested what, to say. Was was he the one who says like, listen, Liquid? Who is that? Like Victor Nazgul, whatever his name is, right? I need six hundred k for this guy. I need you to buy from. He's gonna be gonna be this. You need to give me like whatever. Oh yeah. What was that a thing? Like we don't know. Maybe for somebody else. I mean, all, the obvious all answer is like Brazilian, Brazilian, yeah, 600k. Or bringing in Cadian. Was that Zeus' decision or was somebody else? Getting twists back, was that Zeus or somebody else? Like, you need to know how they, 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 these people in the organization, they need to be on the same page when it comes to the building this thing. If, for example, uh, the organization, the management want to bring twists back because he's, what, North American, and then... Zeus wants to bring a Brazilian back. Maybe they need to talk about it to see if that will actually work. Somebody needs to take a step back. Some compromises need to be taken, like to see what's the best for the team, right? Rather, what's, what's the best for the individual and whose path and whose plan do we follow? The upper management, Victor, Steve, whoever is there, or Zeus and his staff? Does that make sense? Like, which or which path are we taking? Because if we go to double path, if we go left and right, at the same time, they're going to be here where they are, right? And they have a better chance if they follow one of the plans. So that's how I see it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't, I don't know. I have any inside information. So I'm just saying what I see from the outside. See more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.